Hey guys, Dave from One Line Coffee here. I uh, just wanted to uh, give you guys a little bit of a tutorial on how to use our Toddy Home Brewer. Uh, we just, uh, we've actually sold this uh, for a couple of years now, but thought that it would be a good idea to put out a little bit of an informational video just to kind of show you how we use it at home and how we recommend you use it at home. Uh, in addition, we're actually going to be launching a, uh, a package now where you can actually get this brewer along with a four pound bag of either our house coffee uh, the El Progresso or our uh, Method Espresso uh, ground, pre-ground for cold brew. We're going to come back to that in a little bit. Uh, but first things first, I want to go ahead and open this guy up and kind of show you what you get. So as we open up, first thing that you'll pull out of here is your actual storage container. Uh, it does come with a nice little lid, provides a nice airtight seal. Second thing that we have is our actual toddy bucket. Uh, you'll notice that there is a hole in the bottom. Uh, but it does come with a plug and a couple of reusable cloth filters in a container or a plastic bag I should say. So right now I'm going to grab one of those because we're going to use it and I'm also going to grab my rubber plug and I'm going to go ahead and stick it in the bottom here to go ahead and seal up this container. Next thing we have the instructions which you can kind of throw away because I'm going to tell you what you need to do anyway. We've got a removable handle for the bucket, which I'll go ahead and put on now. And finally, we've got this snazzy little silicone lid. And I guess I shouldn't have said finally because we also have some paper filters. Um, paper filters can also be used in place of the cloth filters. Honestly, the difference between the two is a little bit of a personal preference. Um, with the cloth filters, you're going to get a little bit more mouthfeel. You get a little bit more of the oils that are in the coffee um, in that final product. With the paper filter, it's going to absorb most of those oils, and so the coffee is going to be a little bit cleaner. Um, personally, I prefer paper filters, but the nice thing about the cloth ones is that you can wash and reuse them. So not a bad option either. So one of the nice things about Toddy and, and the reason why we use it as kind of a primary cold brew system within our own shops is it's just a really easy system to do. It's relatively foolproof. It's really hard to screw up. You can actually pull it a little bit early. You can let it go too long and you're not really going to get a lot of under extraction or over extraction. And honestly, the product's going to taste really great. Uh, the other nice thing about Toddy is if you do it correctly, you really, you can use any coffee that you want to and it's going to taste good. Um, we don't really have cold brew specific coffees that we recommend. And the reason we don't do that is because honestly, any coffee can taste really good as cold brew um, as long as you're properly extracting it. So let's talk about how to do it. Uh, I thought today I would just go ahead and actually brew a batch so you can see how I do it and kind of walk you through kind of what's important and what's not. Um, so obviously the first thing that you want to do, make sure that your toddy brewer is plugged up so that water doesn't leak out. Now this container will hold up to maybe 2,500, 2,600 grams of water, but your storage container is only going to hold about 1,600, 1,650. So we would recommend actually brewing no more than about 1,600 grams of water at a time in this toddy bucket, just so that you have somewhere to put it. Uh, for cold brew, we actually recommend a brewing ratio of 8 to 1. So that's 8 grams of water for every 1 gram of coffee. So since I'm going to be using 1600 grams of water, I'm going to use 200 grams of coffee, uh, which I have right here. Um, this is the coarsest grind that we can do on our grinders, and that's what I would recommend doing at home. Uh, we compensate for the coarseness of that grind by having this long extended brew time. And for toddy, I always recommend right about 24 hours. So the first thing that I want to do, I want to grab my scale and I'm going to go ahead and fill it with 1600 grams of water. This of course is filtered water at the shop. This is the water that we use for brewing. Um, we actually use it for both espresso and for drip um, and it's really good water. At home, uh, depending upon where you live, you might be able to get away with just some type of a carbon and sediment filter on, uh, on city treated water uh, like in Columbus. Um, if you're outside of that, another good option is to purchase distilled water and some third wave water packets, which you can also purchase through our website to actually make your own brew water at home. All right, so I've got my 1600 grams of water and of course I'm using not cold water, but just room temperature. Uh, if it's a little bit cooler than that, it's totally fine. It doesn't matter too much, but we do find that avoiding really cold, cold water 
can actually increase our extraction. So now I'm going to go ahead and grab our coffee and I'm just going to dump, or uh, first I should say, put my filter in here. And honestly, I should have done this before I added the water, but that's okay. So the filter has a nice tight little chamber that it kind of fits down in there. Uh, so just put it down in until it's nice and secure. Also, make sure your hands are clean. Always a good tip. So I'm going to go ahead and take my 200 grams of water. I'm just going to dump it right in. Now the biggest thing with toddy is that we want to make sure that our coffee is really, really well saturated right from the beginning. So grab your whisk. I know you've got a whisk sitting there somewhere at home. Go ahead and gently stir the coffee, making sure that there are no dry pockets of grounds and that every ground is thoroughly saturated. Now that that's done, I can take my lid, throw it on there, and I am ready to wait for 24 hours. Now a couple of things to talk about. Using the eight to one ratio, what we're actually brewing is a concentrate. And in fact, it is going to be about twice as strong as a normal cup of coffee. So when we actually go to drain this out, what we want to do uh, is actually take that concentrate and dilute it one to one with good clean water to actually create our iced coffee. Now I recommend you do that right when you drain it out and then put it in the refrigerator. Uh, let it get nice and chilled in the fridge before you pour it over a cup of ice so that that ice doesn't actually dilute the product. Um, now, because it's a concentrate, you could actually use it as sort of a an espresso substitute for cold milk-based beverages. Um, it's not going to taste quite the same as using actual hot espresso, but it does taste pretty good. It's a little bit more of a mild flavor and can certainly do in a pinch. So how do you actually drain this? Well, we're going to pretend that it's been 24 hours, uh, even though it's only been about two minutes. And we're going to go ahead and drain it just to kind of show you guys how this works. So grab your container. Now one of the things that you'll notice here is that this has basically these kind of outside uh, kind of flanges that will fit over top of the actual container. It's to prevent it from actually um, falling off or kind of sliding off during the actual drain process. So what you wanna do is very carefully take this, grab your plug, you're going to remove it and the water's gonna start coming flying out, so be careful. Uh, and then once you've actually removed the plug, then you should be able to go ahead and set the container right down to brew. Now obviously, this is probably not gonna be nearly the color as it would be if it had sat for 24 hours, but you get the general idea. So the last thing I wanna talk about before I let you guys go is talking about pre-ground coffee. So we've always made it a big point not to sell pre-ground coffee to our customers, right? So when you grind coffee, you actually artificially uh, accelerate the staling process. And so you start to lose a lot of those volatile aromatics, a lot of the carbon dioxide in the coffee, uh, the things that actually make coffee taste and smell like coffee. So why is it okay to pre-grind for cold brew? Well, cold brew is not an aromatically intensive brew method. I mean, the thing is, is this is sitting for 24 hours. By the way, remove the lid when you drain. This is sitting for 24 hours before it actually is drained out. And during that 24 hour period, you're losing a lot of those aromatics out into the atmosphere anyway. So it doesn't really matter what, if they're there or not. But getting rid of the carbon dioxide can actually give you a really big advantage in cold brew. See, carbon dioxide is a product of uh, the roasting process. And typically speaking, as coffee sits, it starts to lose that carbon dioxide. Well, in brewing, carbon dioxide actually acts as a flow inhibitor. Um, and what I mean by that is it actually prevents water from flowing smoothly over the grounds of coffee. And because of that, carbon dioxide actually prevents extraction. So by pre-grinding our coffee, we actually remove a lot of that carbon dioxide um, and it actually results in a higher extraction yield. So even though we have taken away those volatile aromatics, which we're gonna be gone anyway because it's taking 24 hours to brew, what we have introduced is a very high extraction yield. And that has resulted in a sweeter, more delicious, more fully extracted coffee. So 
Any coffee can be done as cold brew and be absolutely delicious. If you want to order a coffee that's not a four pound bag of method, not a four pound bag of house, uh, you can order any coffee from us and go ahead and just make a comment in the notes that you want to ground for cold brew and we're happy to do so. Uh, the last thing I'll say is today here, we did 200 grams to 1600 grams of water. Uh, if you want to buy a pouch to do it, that's 340 grams of coffee in a pouch. Absolutely nothing wrong with doing 270 gram batches so that you aren't uh, wasting uh, part of the pouch of coffee. So of course, if you're doing uh, you know, 170 grams of coffee, you just want to multiply that by eight to get the grams of water that you need to use. And that's a little north of 1300 if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining us today. Hopefully you'll see that this is a very easy, almost foolproof method for making co or iced coffee at home. Uh, super tasty and uh, honestly, this is something that I use at home. Uh, couldn't function without it. So thanks guys.